Welcome to Healthcare Workflow Process Improvement, Concepts of Workflow Process Improvement. This is Lecture B, Clinical Workflows. The objectives for Lecture B are to describe the purpose of process improvement in the clinical setting, identify the components of clinical workflow, describe the unique aspects of healthcare which add complexity to workflow process improvement, Identify the benefits of healthcare workflow process improvement and the priorities to consider when implementing changes. The main focus of this component is workflow. Recall, a workflow is a process. It includes activities, entities, people or things that take part in the activities, and criteria that specify the order, priority, and timing of the steps. Choices and decisions as well as the information needs are specified. Often, the physical location where the task occurs or proximity to performance locations of other activities need to be considered. All of these things together comprise workflow. A patient visit to a provider's office can be broken down into their component processes. These processes are composed of more detailed activities. Examples of these activities in clinical care, listed here, include interaction with patients, physical assessment, ordering tests, making a diagnosis, developing a treatment plan, following up on test results, etc. Successfully performing workflow process improvement in healthcare settings requires familiarity with common clinical activities, processes, and how they vary in different clinical settings. Clinical care also depends on administrative activities that are necessary for care. They include scheduling, transportation, documentation, billing, food service, laundry, and maintaining an inventory of supplies. These activities that impact the workflow during a clinical encounter, for example, a visit to a provider's office, or the flow of the visit from the perspective of the patient or provider, are often considered in workflow process improvement. Single activities, also called tasks or steps, are grouped together grouped activities into processes. Some examples of activities grouped into processes include patient admission, surgery, collecting lab specimens, etc. The point is that steps in a process can be thought of in groups of smaller steps or as individual steps. The detail level at which one thinks about clinical workflow depends on the detail level that is needed. For example, a professor teaching a new procedure to a resident will describe each single step. However, the medical assistant scheduling the procedure for a patient will think of the procedure as one step, the procedure. There are several roles that are common to many healthcare practices. These include providers, which can be physicians, physician assistants, nurse practitioners, and nurses, and allied health professionals. Allied health professional roles are those involved with the delivery of health or related services pertaining to the identification, evaluation, and prevention of diseases and disorders, dietary and nutrition services, rehabilitation and health systems management, among others. ASA HP 2011 While the providers are licensed professionals, there can be overlap in roles. For example, the nurse may weigh the patient and take vital signs and a history, or these tasks may be performed by a medical assistant. Patient education may be provided by any of the providers. Any of the providers, or a phlebotomist, may draw blood for lab tests. Thus, when analyzing workflow, the role that performs a task must be clear. Clinics that perform outpatient procedures and hospitals tend to have more complex processes that involve even more roles. The physical layout of a clinic can impact workflow because it determines where tasks are performed. For example, can the patients be weighed on the way to the exam room, or must they go past the exam room, get weighed, then come back, creating more hallway traffic? If patients must walk down the hallway, do they pass other patients or pass procedure rooms? Do patients have to walk past exam rooms or back through the waiting room to leave the clinic? Are printers and copiers located conveniently for clinic staff who need them? While changes in the physical layout of a clinic may not be feasible as part of process redesign, 
layout and its impact on physical workflow must be taken into account. Healthcare is an information-intensive endeavor, and information needs are an important part of workflow. For example, one of the meaningful user requirements is to maintain an active medication list for patients, meaning providers are required to reconcile the information they have about medications a patient is taking at each visit. This requires that the patient knows what medications he takes and that the provider can both access the records of medications that the patient is on as well as be able to update that list. In this situation, to better meet the patient and provider needs, this process could be improved by providing the patient information before their visit. The provider could give the patient a blank form to complete at home while they have ready access to their medications or a pre-filled form with their medications that the doctor has on record. Conducting workflow process improvement in healthcare is different than working in other settings because of the unique aspects of healthcare. You will be working within a system of experts and a culture in which physicians and physician extenders are ultimately ethically, morally, and legally responsible for everything that happens to a patient and in which physicians have taken an oath to, above all, do no harm. Healthcare involves one-on-one -on -one contact with people. Decisions sometimes make the difference between life or death or have the potential to seriously impact a person's health. Patient care involves teams of people that depend on minute-to-minute -minute communication and large amounts of information. And patterns of fundamental clinical routines are the product of years and decades of evolution. This evolution involves complex interactions between members of the healthcare team, technology, information, external forces, and organizational factors. Sometimes the result of this evolution is a process that operates optimally. Other times, processes are the relic of compromises or constraints that are no longer important. Only careful analysis can differentiate the two. Other unique aspects of healthcare and clinical workflows that make workflow analysis and process redesign complex include the fact that clinical workflows vary from practice to practice, involve multiple people and organizations. Thus, there are many opportunities for delays and variability. Must take patient preference into account. Have many interruptions. Have many options and exceptions. Have overlapping roles and responsibilities. And involves humans, organizations, information, and technology. Because of the need to contain costs, healthcare today is subject to considerable time and resource pressure. There are many factors that differentiate healthcare from other industries. One looms larger than all the rest. Healthcare is about life and death. Care, including preventative care, directly impacts an individual's health and wellness. Many decisions and actions taken in the course of healthcare involve intervening with someone's physical or mental functioning. Things that impact the care process directly impact patients. Problems, errors, and delays are not just aggravating, inefficient, or even infuriating. They can cause serious harm. Now that we have talked about unique aspects of healthcare settings, let's return to common clinical processes. Common processes in physician practices include appointment scheduling, new patient intake, existing patient intake, exam and patient assessment, ordering labs, and receiving and communicating results, prescriptions, referrals both out and in, diagnostic testing, billing, reporting, and monitoring patient outcomes. On the next slide, you will have the opportunity to watch some videos and identify clinical processes mentioned. Most people are not accustomed to thinking of what they do every day in terms of workflow. That is why we need people trained as workflow specialists to facilitate this process and to help practices accurately describe and analyze their workflows. Several terms used in healthcare that may be confused with workflow or process analysis are regimented care, clinical pathways, clinical guidelines, and accreditation and audit. On your own, look each of these terms up and think about the similarities and differences with process analysis. If you don't normally think of things in terms of workflow, identify three processes that you encounter in your everyday life. 
Then for each of these processes, list out the steps that you identified, including those that you may not personally witness, but assume to have happened, so that you have a complete process described. Consider steps, their order and timing, decisions, locations, information needs, etc. This is an easy way to practice thinking in terms of workflow. Workflow changes in the clinical setting, like physicians, must first do no harm, and secondly, must improve the following processes. Processes can be improved by increasing efficiency, decreasing delays, errors, and cost, increasing quality and safety, improving the work environment, improving ability to care for patients, and creating a better overall patient experience. This concludes Lecture B of Concepts of Workflow Process Improvement. In summary, the purpose of clinical process redesign is to improve the safety, efficiency, and overall quality of healthcare. Meaningful use of health IT can help do this. The Practice Workflow and Information Management Redesign Specialist role helps practices improve the safety, efficiency, and overall quality of care by leveraging health IT. The Practice Workflow and Information Management Redesign Specialist role documents context and process so that it can be analyzed, analyzes process, recommends redesign options, including opportunities to leverage health IT, works with practices to implement redesigned processes, and evaluates, adjusts, and maintains changes. The specialist may do these things himself or may teach groups of practices and facilitate groups to do the analysis and redesign themselves.